Hi everyone, this is a quick explanation of um, <clears throat> using a USB numpad with Martin MPC um, and the program Auto Hotkey. Um, so you can see I just took some gaff tape and some gold sharpie. Not the best solution, but uh, it's held up remarkably well across about three months so far um, to make some custom buttons that really helped me on my workflow uh, to program way faster and um, since my church uh, is running with a uh, I guess elation now M touch um, which doesn't have a physical like a tactile go button having my own button that I can press and feel it um, is just so helpful to make sure I nail those cues, especially the zero second ones. So um, <clears throat> I just have my MPC layout right here um, in the way that I found works for our church. Um, and this has been revised heavily over the past year or so, but um, it's super solid right now. Uh, very fast and efficient in my opinion. Um, you know, so we have our, our groups, Intensity, color, gobo, we only use about three, and we have only some um, lower end fixtures, uh, moving fixtures, and so they don't do weird things or cool things like beam effects or frost or prism or anything like that. So we only use a couple gobos. Our pan tilt presets, um, more intensity presets, but I have color, pan tilt, uh, gobo every single thing recorded to these three right here um, except for blackout because that's essentially my solution to have emergency buttons um, so yeah obviously just a clock 2d plan and then the current cue list uh, buttons which also allows a bit of this to work so um, just going through the buttons on my USB numpad this thing was about eleven dollars at Target um, you know super duper cheap efficient. Uh, right here, this button opens Planning Center and Google Drive. I don't really use it because um, Windows 10 is uh, <laughs> very difficult and wouldn't... It was making it super hard to make Google Chrome my default browser. Um, and then also, for some reason, when I tried to use this button, it wouldn't open it with Google Chrome no matter how hard I tried. Um, and so you know it doesn't take too long to pull up those websites anyway so I don't have a problem with that I have a save button that I also don't usually do um, because the string I had to make to make it work uh, is pretty clunky and includes delays and then multi button presses and so since I need to save each show file twice uh, one is a backup and one is a copy to upload and send out to our other campus um, it's just easier to not but I have it one day it'll be more efficient, I think. Top just takes us back to Q1. So if I just go ahead and, you know, say I'm at the last Q, which is number 70, I just hit top, it goes to number one. And the way it does this, since there's no function to go, that's how most of these are done, is function keys. Um, but a couple of them are by telling the mouse to move to certain coordinates and then clicking. So that's what this one does, is it moves the mouse to our, um, I guess that's just the top or bottom button. I guess it just takes you back to Q1. Uh, it, I know it works, I don't know exactly what it's for, but it works for what I want. So it takes us back to Q1. So, uh, you know, I'll move the mouse here. Roughly, it disappeared, I guess. But I hit top. Yeah, that's right. Top, and then the mouse moves there and clicks it. It takes us back to Q1. Um, next I have message. Um, this is just a default, you know, our current series message look. Um, and that, that's what I have right here is message. And so that's for not even just the message like, you know, our pastor's sermon, but really any time if there was surprise communication and I needed a look on stage. Um, if it felt like it was going to be a longer moment, if it was shorter, I would just pull up some of my front lights that I have on faders. But, um, if it, I don't know why, but like, if, 
if all of the musicians' instruments broke suddenly and Pastor had to come up um, and I didn't have a second to scroll through my cue list and type in the cue for the actual communication look, then I could just hit, tap that or tap the message button down here um, and it would real quick go to that. And ideally, I would have live time set to like 2.5 or 3 seconds instead of zero, so it would fade instead of snap. But if a moment's already crazy enough, you know, a zero second snap to a good look probably won't be the worst thing, and it will get us on the path to better and fixing the moment. Um, after that, I have a 911 button, which I hope I never have to use. It's just for emergency situations, and it turns everything to white turns our mover at 100% and turns our movers off um, because I figured the last thing we need in some sort of emergency situation, whether it's a fire or, um, you know, some intruder, some bad guy comes in, um, the last thing we would need is movers potentially shining in people's eyes or uh, moving around. And so obviously I could make it so they stop motion on that button. But I would, um, since those are the most likely to get in someone's eyes and be distracting or a hindrance, I just turn them to zero. And then all of our house lights and everything else are on, so we can just brighten up the space. Um, and then ideally someone would run and go turn on the house lights. So, like the practicals. So there we have the record button. Um, it just records a cue to the bottom of the cue list. Um, the one thing that's kind of weird with this, I'll scroll down so you can see it, is if... If, say, I've been recording and updating all my Pantel presets, then um, I would have it set to selected, active and inactive, replace, and then I would star it so that every time I hit record it would come up to this. Um, if I don't undo that, then when I hit record, um, it, it just makes it do weird things. I don't fully understand it, but that's just one of those quirky things. Um, where you just gotta make sure you set the record panel back to how it was. All selects all fixtures, and then I have park and unpark. So, park right there. You can see it just, you know, parks everything. And then unpark, obviously just unparks it. And then I can deselect all my fixtures. Um, that's just a super quick, easy way for me during the message or any community, long periods of a static lighting look, I can lock it. So if I need to run to the bathroom real quick, um, it'll be fine, essentially, because we don't generally have a ton of extra people that would be able to switch it, and I would hate for someone to come and do something more destructive than productive in, in like, a variable situation. Um, I'm not sure. But, you know, just park, unpark, and then update. Uh, this is set to a function key that's update update so really it just saves me an extra hit um, and then also saves me from needing the M touch out um, to program so if I needed to change a queue um, like say we're at Q1 and this is just our pre-gathering look where it's a really bright room um, if I just wanted to update the movers to zero uh, if if I didn't have my little numpad I could, not that, but it would take a couple hits. So I'd change the movers, pull up this guy, update, and then I'd have to hit update again. And so that's like three or four button hits, and I'd rather it just be one. So I just hit it, and then there we go. Barely faster, but anything to save some time. Snap is another one of those mouse movements. Um, that I had to I had to fiddle around with all the ones that move the mouse because you know obviously if the resolution changes or if I resize a window just a little bit it'll mess it up and make it not hit its mark um, and so that's just something that took a little bit of time and uh, if you want the file for this I can send it out um, to you just leave an email or something and then would be cool for like a $5 donation, but also, you know, uh, I think this is super helpful and I want to help out churches. So, uh, you, you'll just need to play around with that snap button. Um, but that just moves the mouse to right here, this little fast forward arrow looking guy snap. And that in zero seconds, um, 
goes from Q to Q. It just ignores, whoops, focus. There we go. It just ignores our fade time, which is helpful if like we're halfway through a song or in rehearsal or something, um, and then the band decides to stop and start over, then I can hit top and then just snap back through real quick to where we were at because in those rehearsal moments I don't necessarily need to care about um, the lights going crazy for me snapping through a ton of cues real quick um, and I could just scroll through the cue list type it in but I want to just be able to go tap 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 then we just have go uh, that's a function button instead of a mouse one that uses regular timing our backslash pause button it's just the two lines um, should have made it a backwards arrow, but it's okay. Um, and then clear. That's just clear, clear. Also a function button. So turn everything to zero or something. Hit clear. And then great. We're back at it. So that's um, just my, my little USB keypad. I have it set up in auto hotkey. Just save to our desktop. See if I can pull this up. Yes, I would like to replace it. Somewhere I have the file, maybe that's it. No. It's, uh, I have it. So, the auto hotkey uh, script is just, you know, collection of directions that say USB uh, or numpad 2 or whatever correlates to pressing like F12 or something. Um, and then in MPC, most of these I have set to only work in MPC, so if I bump them in another program like Google Chrome, it doesn't affect it. So you can see function keys right here. This is just how I have them set up. And so uh, auto hotkey will only go up to F12, um, even though, you know, obviously MPC has F13 through F like 100 or something. Um, auto hotkey will only do it with up to F12. And so some of these I have used for my M-Touch and some of these I use for the numpad. So that's about it. Um, leave a comment or message me with your email if you want the auto hotkey file. You'll need to tweak it based off your resolution and um, your screen setup, but should be pretty good and helpful out the box. And then your uh, function keys will need to look pretty similar to this. You'll definitely need F5, F6, F8, F9, through F12 to be the same. But if you want, you can make those all any other F uh, function number and then um, just change the auto hotkey script. So that's what that is. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you very much.